In the immediate aftermath of World War II, Britain was put under rationing. This was where people basically, you could only buy a certain amount of stuff because there was, it was limited supply because of what had gone on in the past six years. However, by the 1960s, rationing had finally come to an end. So with rationing no longer a thing, people were now free to buy whatever they wanted. And people wanted money, give us money. The class divide was growing bigger and bigger and bigger as people got more and more rich. But while some got richer, some got poorer and poorer and poorer. Money, 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 give me all your money. The best things in life are free. You can keep them for the birds and bees. Now give me money. Now, none of the Beatles came from particularly wealthy backgrounds, but by the time they got to the mid to late 60s, they'd become pretty wealthy men. But that didn't change them as people, really. George Harrison, in particular, did not buy into consumerism. He thought it was quite a disgusting thing, the class divide. So, George decided to take a satire look on this greed of society. Welcome back to the White Album in Depth. This is episode 12, Piggies. <coughs> It's no secret that George Harrison was a fan of satire. He never took himself too serious, and his songs often included humour. I like to be a pirate, a pirate's life for me. All my friends are pirates and the same on the BBC I got a jolly roger, it's a black and white and fast So get out of your skull and crossbones and I'm running off your mask With yo ho ho and a ha ha dee ha ha ho 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 and a ha ha dee ho 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 I got a jolly roger, it's a black and white and fast Oh, get out of your skull and crossbow. I run it up your mask. By 1966, George was composing more and more songs, and one of the songs he composed that year was Taxman, which would be the opening track on 1966's Revolver. Another track he was composing at the time was the song Piggies, or at least he was starting to work on it. Uh, now, Piggies would actually serve as an unintentional companion piece to Taxman. Harrison was intending for Piggies to be a social commentary on consumerism, financial greed and the class divide through the use of light-hearted satire about a community of pigs. So despite starting to write the song in 1966, George actually forgot about the song and he wouldn't return to it until 1968, two years later. This was when he was visiting his parents' house and he found up in the attic of their house was a manuscript and this manuscript included George's early draft of Piggies. So with George now having rediscovered the song, he decided that he would continue working on it. He decided now that he would also draw inspiration from George Orwell's 1945 novel called Animal Farm. George would also ask for help with the lyrics from his mother, Louise Harrison. Uh, she suggested the line, what they need to damn good whacking. George liked it, stuck it in the song. So in early drafts of the song, it actually included an additional verse that went a bit like this. Everywhere there's lots of piggies playing piggy pranks. You can see them in their trotters down the piggy banks, paying piggy thanks to thy piggy brother. So obviously George decided to take this verse out on the Beatles recording of the song, it wasn't included. However, after the Beatles split, whenever George played the song live, which admittedly wasn't very often, but whenever he did, he decided to reinstate the verse. So on live recordings of Piggies, he's actually singing that verse again. Uh, you can hear it on the 1992 live album called Live in Japan. The Beatles regrouped at George's house during the last week of May 1968 to record 27 acoustic demos. The vast amount of these songs would end up on the White Album. Now one of the demos recorded that day was George's Piggies. Now, at this point, the song actually included the lyric clutching forks and knives to eat their pork chops. And if you listen to the recording of this demo, that's the line that George sings. However, at some point after this demo had been recorded, John Lennon made a suggestion to George. He suggested that it was changed to clutching forks and knives to eat their bacon. George liked this, so yeah, he changed it to that. Uh, anyway, if you want to hear this demo, good news, you can. You can hear it along with all the rest of them on the 50th anniversary edition of the White Album. The Beatles began recording Piggies on September 19th, 1968 at Abbey Road. Initially, the band were working in Studio 2 on the song. However, assistant producer Chris Thomas 
made a suggestion to the band. He'd noticed that in Studio One, they had a harpsichord just lying about. So he suggested that they use that for the song. So the sessions then moved into Studio One so that the harpsichord could be used. So the band spent this first day of sessions working on just the basic track. They would manage to complete the basic track for Piggies in 11 takes. Now for this basic track, Chris Thomas played the harpsichord, George Harrison played the acoustic guitar, Paul McCartney played the bass and Ringo Starr played the tambourine. Now John Lennon was present at the studio that day, he was there when the session was taking place but for some reason he didn't play any instrument, he just sat and watched them. Why wouldn't you, hey? The following day on September 20th 1968 the band then returned to work on the song, this time they were focusing on the overdubs. So firstly George decided that he would record his lead vocal, now while he was doing this John and Paul also sang co-lead vocal with him on the final verse of the song. Now for the bridge of the song, George's vocals were heavily limited to make it sound like he was pinching his nose. So you know, he sounds a bit like this everywhere, there's lots of piggies living piggy lives, you can see them out for dinner with their piggy what leaves, oh yes you can folks. You don't get any type of top notch content like that anywhere else on YouTube, I can assure you of that. <laughs> anyway, John Lennon also assembled a load of tape loops that day, this was just the pig noises basically, which would then be added onto the track. Work would then continue on Piggies a few weeks later on October 10th 1968 where the final few overdubs were added. This was the string section for the song. For this George Martin wrote a score. George Martin's score was then performed by eight session musicians who were present at Abbey Road that day. And with the string section recorded and then applied to the track, that was Piggies complete, ready to go. The White Album was released on the 22nd of November 1968 and Piggies was the 4th track on side 2 of the album, it was also the 12th track overall on the album. It also served as the 2nd track on the album in a trilogy of songs that all include animals in their song titles. Now unfortunately folks it's time once again to talk about Charles Manson because just like Blackbird, the song that I talked about in the previous episode, uh, Manson and his family of lunatics managed to find a load of bizarre meanings in the lyrics of Piggies. Now Manson believed that black people were going to rise up and kill all white people, however Manson and his followers they would be saved because Manson had found a series of clues in both the Book of Revelations and in the White Album. So with Piggies in particular, Manson thought that Piggies represented the white people being killed, the white people were the Piggies. In particular he took focus to the lyric, what they need is a damn good whacking. You can thank Louise Harrison for that. So in August 1969 Manson had his family of lunatics, his followers, commit a series of murders. Now when they committed these murders, they then using the blood of their dead victims, uh, wrote pigs on either the walls or the front doors of where the victims lived. Lovely bunch of people eh? However, unsurprisingly this uprising never came, the black people never killed all the white people and all that happened was Manson and his family of idiots managed to get themselves arrested and locked up for murder. Now perhaps unsurprisingly George Harrison wasn't best pleased with all this that had been going on. Uh, he didn't really understand where Manson had got all these ideas from, at the end of the day he just intended for this to be a little bit of a joke, it was just about businessmen and people who were very greedy with their money. That was all Piggies was supposed to be about, it was just a bit of satire, it had nothing to do with a war coming and killing people and all of that. Yeah, I, I think he was a bit shocked by it to be honest, and you would be if something that you thought up in your head as just a bit of a joke ended up leading to people being killed. A bit disturbing really. So for me personally, I'm going to be honest, Piggies has never been one of my favourite songs on the White Album. It's probably, if I had to rank all 30 tracks, I would actually say Piggies would be probably quite near the bottom. Uh, of George's four tracks on the White Album, this is by far, in my opinion, the weakest of the four. Now we know by this point that George had quite a backlog of songs, and these were great songs as well. For example, Isn't It A Pity, one of the best tracks of All Things Must Pass. This was written in 1966, so by this point it existed, and yet he didn't think to put it here on the White Album. He thought Piggies was a better song than Isn't It A Pity. I don't get it, I genuinely don't. Same thing with Sour Milk C, now I know Jackie Lomax recorded it and George, Paul and Ringo were playing on it. Uh, as a side note, when we get to the end of this series and I've done all 30 songs, I intend to do an episode 31 which will focus on the Isha demos that were recorded but then didn't make the White Album, there's like 6 or 7 of them so we'll look at them 6 or 7 songs in one video. Sour Milk Sea being one of them. But spoilers, I really like Sour Milk Sea and I'm genuinely gutted that the Beatles didn't record it for the Wyatt album. I think it could have been a really good single and 
yeah, again, sour milk tea, in my opinion, that should have been here in place of um, piggies. Now, I like jokey songs. I like satire. I think George is really, really good at it. He does it again on the White Album with Savoy Truffle, which I think is a better track, personally, than Piggies. There may be others out there that think uh, Piggies is a better song than Savoy Truffle. But I don't feel when George only has four songs on the album that two of them need to be jokey satire songs. Uh, yeah, if it was between this and Savoy Truffle, it'd be Savoy Truffle I'd be picking, and then a better song from George's backlog. But to be fair, the satire that is on display here, it's very good. George isn't wrong in what he's saying about greed and consumerism and all of that stuff. I just, yeah, it's just the song itself. I don't really care for it all that much. Sorry. So yeah, that concludes another episode of the White Album in Depth. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed to my channel, well, please do consider subscribing. It would mean a lot. Now, uh, if you have enjoyed this and you haven't seen any of the previous episodes, well, because I'm a kind and considerate person, uh, I have kindly put a playlist together on my channel which consists of all previous episodes and all future episodes will also be in that playlist. Anyway, I will see you next time where we will be looking at the third and final track in this trilogy of animal songs on the White Album. So, prepare yourselves because we're going to the Wild West, partners. Till then, though, do take care.